Hey there, and welcome back. Last time we were here, we talked about using process layers to add scratches and dirt and all that kind of stuff in here. Today, we're gonna talk about how to duplicate all of that into the rest of it. I was gonna do this off screen and just have you guys do it, but there's an easy way to apply this. I would suggest you do it individually, that way you get a different variance, but uh, this is a, a quick way if you're working on an asset quickly. I'm also gonna talk about like projecting or stamping on words. So an easy way to handle this is let's go ahead and right click duplicate in your layers let's call this handle grenade handle okay we're going to right click here we're going to del delete the mask right click we're going to add the mask back black from here process input color selection make sure you're on material id just like we did prior to and select boom all right if you look you can see that we have some issues here um, and if you wanted to understand why that is and understand what's being affected it that's actually the curvature map you can see that if I were to go to wireframe, you can see it's running along. Uh, basically, it's the angle from there to there is registering as curvature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up, go into my metal edge, which I created in the prior one. You can see right here, go into the curvature layer. And from here, I'm just gonna tone down the edge intensity and you can tone down the contrast and everything else. So you can still see we have a little bit of hit and you can see everything else is looking pretty decent, okay? Nice and easy, we can close that up. Same thing down here. I'm just gonna duplicate it for, for uh, time. So we're gonna go ahead and duplicate this. Right click, delete mask, right click, add mask, black mask, back up to a process layer up here. Add color ID, material ID, good, select it. And we're just gonna select the pins. Now you can see the pins uh, have automatically adjusted to this, okay? And from what I can see, we're not getting too much distortion on it, so that should be fine for now. So with this, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this to pins. Pins, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up, go to the steel dirty, and I'm just gonna adjust this color just a little bit darker. Okay, that way we just get a little bit of, a, a little bit of adjustment there, okay? And if I were really going, I'd put uh, like oil wear from hands on here. You can hand paint or do something. You can adjust more paint falling off right here because that's gonna be something that's being rubbed because that's where it's clipped in. So there's a lot of different things we can do, but for time and for speed right now, this is a quick and down dirty uh, tutorial. So now our whole entire thing is textured, which is nice. You can see we have a slight color variation there, just enough to draw it off. It's not realistic, but it's enough to differentiate itself from those two. Okay, the next thing that we want to do, and we're going to do it quickly, is we're going to apply words to it. So what you want to do is in your layers, you want to write, um, you want to add a paint layer. Oh, I'm sorry, that added inside. We don't want it to add inside paint layer. Good. Let's make sure we didn't put it in here. Okay, we're good. So now we have a fill layer. We're going to call this words. Okay. Uh, let's go into the albedo alone give us some roughness in here get a little bit more on the shiny right click add mask yet again black mask so we can edit it all right great now that you're up here you have your tool settings let's go ahead and click brush all right what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to find your brush you're going to find your um the words that you created in photoshop here okay i'm going to click it i'm going to drag it over into brush boom you don't have to import it into your thing you can you can just drag it in there if you want, but you can drag it right in. And as you can see, I'm already in here. We're good to go. You have a lot of different settings. Tangent, UV, uh, you have object, which is gonna, def if you look in here, it's gonna deform uh, based on the UVs to try to give you a nice even uh, placement. You can also choose uh, screen, which will yet again adjust it, which makes it actually much flat, doesn't deform as much. Uh, you can come up here and you can adjust these different type of things like a sticker which will, you can see it's deforming across. It's trying to press everything on top. And you can do UV, which is nice because it just gives you the words nice and flat in UV. All right, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna adjust the angle. All right, I haven't found a shortcut for adjusting the angle just yet. So that's a little bit of a pain, um, like a hot key or something, which is a little bit, little bit of a pain. All right, let's go 20. So yeah, kind of got to do it by hand right now, which is which is which really kind of is just a pain. All right, that'll be good enough for for what we're trying to do. Um, it's not perfect, but it'll work. You can also stamp it over here. Now that I have it here, the thing is, like, you don't want it to be clean because all that dirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up this. Let's see, grenade base, and I'm going to take these dirt masks. 
I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate them. I'm gonna grab both of them and I'm gonna drag them into the actual layer here. Boom. And that should give us a little bit of dirt overwriting, just enough, okay? Just so we get the, the breakup on uh, specularity and that's all we're really looking for right there, okay? Not looking for too much. Okay, close that up. And let's go ahead and close that up. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I want to paint out and make this kind of match a little bit more, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna adjust the color because we want it to be more of like a, a yellow. Okay, cool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a folder. I'm gonna drag this whole thing into that folder. I'm gonna call this oh, okay. words mask. Okay, right click, add mask. Add black mask. So here we can follow what we did earlier. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and delete mask. Let's go ahead and add a white mask this time. So everything shows through. What you can do here is you can go in and add in here, add a dirt layer and then add a procedural and then just adjust it and it'll automatically de delete everything. But what you can also do in here is you can actually go to your brush and you can just go into your textures and you can select a texture and you can drag it into your brush. Now you get it here, and now what we can do is if we turn this black, you can use X, you can use this little icon here. You can also just drag this. I'm gonna use X, that's easy for me. And what you can do is you can basically just, we're gonna do a quick stamp here. Stamp, real easy, just kinda, we wanna destroy it a little. And now we can do a little bit more love, 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 love. There we go. Okay, just a little bit and then we want to let's get rid of a lot of it on one of them let's give a little bit of that going away there we go so nothing looks too 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 crazy okay and you can adjust the opacity give it a quick stamp give it a quick stamp there we go all right cool we don't want anything too bright but we want it to pop at a little bit of a distance perfect all right so Within just a couple minutes, we were easily able to duplicate what we'd already done. We were able to drag it on and just adjust it very easily and apply it on others. I would not fully suggest that. It's a good base to do. I'd go in and adjust the maps and the size of it. I'd also go in and do some hand painting if this were a final product. But for time and for a great base, we are able to just duplicate and add everything on. And I can still go back in here since we're working in a non-destructive workflow and I can adjust things. Like if I wanna go into the head and I wanna adjust the scratches or the grunge, I can come in here and I can turn, turn it off a little or turn it on and adjust, which is really nice. And that's the benefit of a non-destructive workflow is I can adjust it and keep going and build off of this. Okay, so we were able to duplicate that and apply it to everything else, give us a little bit of variety. We were able to easily bring something into our project and stamp it on. And we were able to hand paint via a mask and a folder, a little bit of destruction. Like I said, you could also use a process layer and use dirt and in the mask. And that would do the same thing depending on which dirt mask you applied or grunge mask. All right, so now our thing is all textured up. The next video is just gonna be a little bonus video. We're gonna talk about gradients, kind of like we did with the other one. Um, there are many ways to do gradients in here, but I'm gonna show you the way that I prefer. It's easy and it doesn't crash Marmoset, which is nice. And then following that, we'll talk about exporting the textures. All right, until next time.